So recently, two tech YouTubers made videos on why it sucks to get into PC gaming at the moment, and Greg from Science Studio made a video on the economics involved in that and why GPU prices are the way they are. Paul from Paul's Hardware, however, made a video on just in general why it sucks in relation to DDR4 pricing and also GPU pricing and why it's not really going to come down anytime soon. The video in ways was a negative outlook and I completely agree with both videos. It does indeed suck to get into PC gaming at the moment if you are buying new PC parts. So today I'm here to give you guys an alternative to that and we're gonna look at some used price performance and deals that you can get. So strap yourselves in and let's jump aboard the Yesmobile. Welcome back to Tech yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with not just an alternative to the hostile market for new PC buyers, but also an alternative to the way we think about economics. Now in Greg's video, he showcases a model on perfect competition, and this is a fantastic objective model. But the problem here is that humans are anything but objective. A lot of the times we are very subjective, and this relates to our emotions, and in turn that relates to consumer behavior. And now with consumer behavior, it's a very tricky thing, and this relates to what we're prepared to pay for an item, which in ways is directly related to demand for an item. However, what we're prepared to pay and what we actually pay for an item are two separate things. Have you ever seen someone in an electronics store, for instance, being not prepared to pay something, but eventually being conned by a salesman and then ended up paying more than what they were prepared to pay? This is because the subjective or the emotional side of the human allowed him to be conned into paying extra money than what he was prepared to pay. And also ironically enough, what we're prepared to pay for an item is also directly correlated to the innovation in that particular field. For instance, if we were prepared to pay more money for a CPU or a GPU, and also more people were getting into enthusiast technology, you would see higher gains year over year than what we're currently seeing. However, if you look at the GPU market, for example, what we are seeing is a substantial increase year over year in terms of graphical performance. This is because the increase in enthusiast PC gamers has increased a lot in the past few years. However, I won't just stop there. This next part segues perfectly into the rest of this video. And now with consumer behavior and what we're prepared to pay for an item is sometimes overshadowed by supply or how much of an item is in stock. For instance, if there's too much of an item in stock, we as humans will perceive that as not being a good deal and we can procrastinate and then sometimes check back and the item's completely out of stock. So this is a factor that can stop you from getting good deals. When I hunt for deals, I leave out human emotion. I'm prepared to pay a price. If I don't get it for that price, I go on to the next deal. However, unless that's a GTX 690, then I went crazy in one of my recent par hunts for that. Though another example of this is the first reason of my four points that I'm gonna make here today, and this is motherboards in the used price performance sector. On AliExpress, you can currently get a P55 gigabyte motherboard for 55 US dollars shipped anywhere in the world. It's incredible value for money when you couple it with a Xeon X3450, for example. This is just over $30. It's a four core, eight threaded CPU with decent IPC, and it overclocks really well. Now DDR4 prices, although they're ridiculously expensive, and in my mini ITX build, I did rant about the prices. They were $315 for a 32 gig kit, and I paid $115 for that same kit a year ago. But with DDR3 memory, which is a generation beforehand, the prices are a lot less costlier. For instance, you can get a four gigabyte stick going on Amazon for $20 delivered to your door. So that's $40 for an eight gigabyte kit. This will serve you really well on a budget gaming PC. And here is reason number two, Gravis cards. Yes, cryptocurrency miners are snapping up a lot of the new Gravis cards. However, cryptocurrency miners also demand efficiency. If something is not power efficient, and there is one better Gravis card out there that's more power efficient for mining, they will generally take that Gravis card, and that Gravis card will be in high demand. So with the older generation Gravis cards, they're not as power efficient as the newer Gravis cards, and a lot of people want to upgrade to the latest and greatest, and with that, we can get some really good deals on Gravis cards. For instance, I just took a quick look. I could get a GTX 960, four gigabytes, for probably around 100 Australian dollars if I put in an offer. That's around 80 USD, four gigabyte model, that will serve me really well for gaming. If I wanna play PUBG at 1080p, Overwatch or some other competitive titles, this Gravis card will serve me really nicely. A lot of my other budget builds as well, I've looked at Gravis cards spanning from R9 290Xs to GTX 780s, and they're all really good Gravis cards for the money. I'll put some links in the description below for you guys. And here we are with reason number three. Everything else new is actually pretty good for the money. And in fact, since there's a lower demand due to DDR4 memory prices, storage, for instance, cases, power supplies, and coolers are actually pretty cheap at the moment. For instance, if you're in Australia, you can get a Cougar power supply and case 
for $69. And actually the included power supply, the 500 watt power supply, I've tried this in the past and it's exceptionally good value for money for what you're getting. So if you guys are in the market, you can pick up some new parts and just know that you're getting very good value for money. You can get a one terabyte hard drive for just over $40. You can get coolers for $25. And also you can sometimes get decent 430 watt power supplies for $20. And now we're gonna get into the final reason on why it's a good thing to get into the used PC market. And this is quite simply overclocking. When we look at a brand new 8700K, I just tested this CPU out. It went to five gigahertz. However, out of the box, it will turbo up to 4.7 gigahertz in a lot of cases. So you're not even getting a 10% boost in performance from your factory clock settings. However, let's rewind it back to the older generations that I've talked about here today, the P55, and in particular, one of my favorites, the X58. Sometimes we can get a 40% boost in performance by overclocking. So if you guys do have a bit of time and you wanna learn how to overclock, you can gain some serious benefits from overclocking on the older gear. And with that, it will make it a very good experience. For instance, the Xeon X3450 that I mentioned, you can sometimes overclock these to four gigahertz on $25 coolers and couple that with a GTX 1060, for example. And not only will you be at no detriment on this CPU versus a new CPU, but you also have a really good experience for the price and performance that this thing will offer. Anyway guys, before I get on out of here, I went on good old Gamtree and I pulled up some deals. This literally only took me 10 minutes to do and what I found was a whole PC that I could piece together if I called up all these people. So we had a build here for theoretically around about 400 Australian dollars. It cost you around 300 US dollars and we got a motherboard, cooler and CPU for around 80 Australian dollars. Now. We can change the CPU over to a Xeon X5670, which costs around 50 Australian dollars. And then there was a Gravis card, a GTX 964 gigabyte. They're asking $120, but I'm sure could have dropped in an offer of 100 since they're negotiable, and I reckon I would have got it. And now for memory, there's one guy selling two different sales of DDR3 memory, He's selling 14 gigabytes in total. And since the X58 motherboards have six slots, we could put in 12 gigabytes of memory and we'd be kitted out and ready for gaming. I reckon I could get this memory for at least $70 Australian, really good deal. Now, case and power supply, $69, brand new from Umart. We don't have to waste any time there. Hard disk drive, someone's selling one for $30 brand new. We could probably even get one of these for a little bit cheaper if we tried. And then that brings the total to 402 Australian dollars. That's if I just went out, hunted this, I could build this PC and then start overclocking it today. And that's about it for today. If you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below if you agree or disagree with today's video. Also, if you're new to Tech Yes City, then there are a lot of people in the comments section that can help you out if you need tips on getting into used price performance or you wanna buy some new parts and you've got a build list. A lot of people in the comments are very friendly around here. And with that said, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.